He's a battler. He's a fighter. He's got to this point in his life. There's something special about this kid. He has every reason in the world to not have a good day, yet he shows up every day with a smile on his face. Play for each other. Yeah. Play for each other. Yeah. That's the only thing we got out here. One, two, three. Baby! There's no excuse. Quentin Flowers, first down and more. He breaks it. He has taken so much strength from what he's been through, and he's used it, and he's funneled it in a positive way. Every day not promised. You know, you just gotta cherish the moments because at the end of the day, you don't know when God will call for your number. Quentin Flowers was introduced to football by his father, Nathaniel Sr., here in Miami's Liberty City neighborhood. Growing up in Liberty City, how would you describe that? You know, a lot of killing, uh, a lot of violence. Anything could happen at any time. And I just didn't want to be one of them kids, so I just tried to stay with football all around the year. In 2000, at the age of seven, Quentin and his father were watching football and barbecuing in the front yard. And I told him I'm gonna go to the restroom, I'll be right back. By the time I got in the house, I just heard everybody screaming. I didn't know what, what it was for, but I looked out the window and I just seen my dad face first on the ground. And we seen like, you know, ambulance coming, we seen the police is outside, we seen mom over my dad crying. And we was just standing there like we was just we was kids, we didn't know what was going on, we just know my dad was there. Hours after that, we just seen them covering his body with a white sheet. And that was that. It's just crazy, because every time I come through here, it's like I see my dad. <laughs> this is the place I've been, man. This is where I grew up. This is where I grew up. I could have got killed any time. Anytime I want to be successful. Quentin's father was killed by a stray bullet intended for someone else. His mother, Nancy, was left to raise him and his elder siblings on her own. Football became an escape. We spoke about it and he told me the situation and I was like, whoa. And then I gave him my situation. I told him, hey, you know, I lost my father at the age of 11 years old as well. You know, he was due to gun violence as well. What was the toughest part of that conversation? Um, telling a kid that it's gonna be all right, knowing that it's not, you know? Quentin became a top high school prospect heading into his sophomore year. When he first learned his mother's health was failing. You know, my mom started to miss worry. She always said she had something to do. And then she kept going in and out of the hospital, in and out. And that's when I started to notice that something was wrong. Just knowing that another person in your life, not just your mom, your best friend, your number one fan, everything you could think of is leaving you. Um, it was just shocking. I couldn't believe that. Every time I was doing something right, something was getting taken from me. Less than a year later, in January 2014, Nancy died from complications related to AIDS. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and um, I get a phone call. He said, Coach, I said, what's up? And he was crying. I said, so what's going on? He said, I don't want to play football no more. I got in my car and I went over there. And you know, I hold him. <clears throat> we talked, we talked for two or three hours. He sat down and talked to me and told me, if your mom was still here, would you quit? And I was like, no. He was like, so why quit now? You know, this your way, you know, out of the hood. That journey from Liberty City led Quentin to the University of South Florida. Flowers looking long, he's got McCants. He's playing more than just for his team. You know, he's thinking about his parents each and every day. He's thinking about his family. So now he, it's almost like this is how I'm repaying them. Yeah, be so happy that, uh, that I'm in college and not in the streets. 
I would say uh, they'd be very proud of me.